This episode is sponsored by Nutrafol. To get your first month supply with subscription for $10, visit nutrafol.com and use promo code MADCAST during checkout. Welcome to the best debate in the universe. Every debate in the universe, from small wieners to TV dinners, with over 3.5 million downloads. I'm your host, Maddox. With me is the first tangent officer, Ron Babcock. Thank you, Maddox. And as always, the junior journalist, Taylor Nikolai. Happy to be here. Welcome back to the show. Guys, exciting show this week, amazing show. We're going to be debating, is marketing evil? That's something that uh, a lot of people have thoughts on, and we're going to delve into every aspect of marketing, from internet to traditional. We're going to talk about it all, and we have the perfect guest for it. He is beautiful and lovely. He is an entrepreneur, a growth hacker, and a, a public speaker. Please welcome to the show, Vin Clancy. Vin, welcome to the show. I am much aggrieved to be here. <laughs> so, uh... Part of the reason I mentioned that you were uh, beautiful and lovely is because last week, that's how I introduced Lauren Francesca, our guest. Right. Uh, And she is beautiful and lovely. And I got this comment on YouTube. It's like, oh, Maddox, how come you're hitting on her so hard? Uh." And so (laughs) I was like, because I said two words at the top of a show, dipshit. That's how I hit on girls. Like I, I say they're beautiful and lovely when I'm introducing them on a podcast. Yeah, real busted idiot. Anyway, Vin, welcome to the show. <laughs> uh, so glad to have you. We've been so we met. Uh, I think a year and a half, two years ago, Comic-Con. right? Comic Con. Comic Con. That's right. And we went. We met at a club, and. Uh, Went back to my place. Yeah, we did. Had yeah. a drink together. Yeah, yep. We sure did. <laughs> we sure did. This does sound like a date. <laughs> uh, but I remember when we met, um, I remember that I didn't get your contact, I think. And I was like, I, you did pop into my mind. I thought, oh, where's that cool guy I wanted to hang out with again? And then we got reacquainted at another party. Yeah, we, we are real LA types, going to yeah. LA parties. Everything you said you never would be 15 years ago. Yeah, well. Uh, Basically well. <laughs> had like a story of Cinderella. You know, you yeah. couldn't find him. The glass slipper. And then all of a sudden you finally found him and was right. able to reconnect. This podcast is the glass slipper that brought us back together. You got your, you got your Cinderfella. Yeah, some... <laughs> Run. <laughs> 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 Very cool. Well, glad to have you, and you are the perfect guest for this debate. Now, Vin, let's give the listeners a little bit of background into what you do, because it's phenomenal. You go, you, you are just a marketing... Uh, genius entrepreneur, right? As I mentioned at the top of the show, what is it you do? And you you have a new book coming out. Yeah. So um, today's debate is about is marketing evil, and I will make the case that it isn't. Five years ago, I was on social welfare back in the UK, living off equivalent of about a hundred dollars a week. Uh, when I decided to start a business, uh, so I had to do marketing to get traffic to the website. Um, and I had people starting to write content for me. Within six months, we had 300,000 visitors a month. Within a year, we had a million visitors a month on the website, planetivy.com. Uh, I raised venture capital, a quarter million dollars. I got off welfare. And since then, I've had multiple businesses. Um, I have uh, did a 100-day speaking world tour. Um, I, my first book made nearly $200,000, my first marketing book. Uh, I've helped thousands of people grow their businesses, start businesses. Um, and I now live out here in America um, helping businesses grow. So I'm a big advocate that a lot can be done when you use marketing and it can change people's lives. Very cool. Holy shit, man. What an amazing story. Went from essentially social welfare in the UK yeah. to running an empire, an yes. entire media empire. That is fantastic. Where can where can people, how often do you do public speaking events? Um, I'm taking a year off because I'm working on a certain project, but uh, I don't know, New York, July 15th, I'm speaking, and then LA, I'm speaking in August. Uh, so if you look up Vin Clancy on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, you'll find me. Uh, AceTheGame.com is my new book, The 100 Best Techniques Right Now to Grow Your Small Business or to Start a Small Business and Get Traffic Without Paying. When Fantastic. You, did you have that vision? Like when you were like on social welfare over over the UK, like usually most people, if they're in that position in life, their first thought isn't, I should grow a media empire. <laughs> so like, did you really think that you're like, this is what I'm going to do? Or were you just trying to satisfy like basic needs? Be like, oh, hey, this is how I could start to make some a little bit oh, of cash. It's, it's the worst way to satisfy basic needs uh, to start a startup. 
because even when it grows, you don't pay yourself any money. Um, uh, my ex-girlfriend said to me, you have to do something. Um, you have to do something, a full stop. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, yeah, and then I actually had a dream that I'd create something where the writers would be stars, not the mu- not musicians. And then the next day, it was me, like me and a 17-year-old kid made the website and then uh, it was my job to get traffic to it. I use sites like Fark, F A R K. Do you remember? Oh that yeah, site? Fark. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah, yeah. Fark. I just hung out with Drew Curtis. Oh from cool. Fark. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we were uh, we're friends. We uh, we got dinner a couple, uh, uh, you know, three four weeks ago, and he's a really cool dude. He's writing a book with a, another friend of mine. Nice. Uh, yeah. So yeah, very cool. So you 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 used Fark. Yeah. Market. So um, I may as well tell. I, so this goes in the unethical part. I had multiple Fark accounts all submitting articles from my website. And then, like, one in five or six would hit, and then hundreds of people would hit the site. Wow, that's super fascinating. Yeah, on the internet, no one knows who you are anyway. It, it's, yeah, you're right. On the internet, no one knows you're a cat. Oh, you're a right. cat, yeah. That's that great. one is a bit abstract, though. Yeah. Anyway, so that's uh, that's fascinating. So Fark had, a, had some plane. So was that the first big hit you got, like, the big That, that was trap? one of the first. Um, are we allowed to talk about strange things on here? Strange things. Like well, cause I'll, like we had a hit in the second week, which maybe had 25,000 visitors. Um, so basically, one of our articles did an investigation into something called bug chasing. Do you know what that is? Bug chasing? No. What is that? <laughs> so bug chasing is a practice, either rumored or real, and no one really knows uh, that may or may not happen in the gay community where one oh i do know this yes go on so uh where a member of the gay community who's hiv negative seeks out men who are hiv positive to have unprotected sex with him on the off chance that they become hiv positive chasing the bug yeah so we did an article on that it was one of the first ever to go on the internet it went viral on reddit and got us twenty five thousand visitors and that's how planet ivy took off wow that, that was is that first. a is that a so, true thing yeah I have Why a, I, would people want to be HIV positive? They, they call it the the hottest uh, experience ever. Well, maybe they should just try murder. <laughs> Getting murder that's pretty <laughs> hot. Taylor's face as I said that. No, I I have I have I'm very heard this scared before. right now. I I have a I have a gay friend who first told me about this where some people you know they're they're bug chasers. I didn't know that that phrase though, but he said that some 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 gay man in the community absolutely do want to be HIV positive as uh, for a number of different reasons. Like some of them want to have some kind of uh, camaraderie, I guess, with with other men they, they might meet or sleep with. Some of them, it's something that they can just simply say and be out in the open about and not have to worry about. It's something that they are worried about. You know, it's, some of them just want to get rid of the stigma. There's a lot of different reasons. What what have you found to be the... Uh, I, I mean, outside of that article, I, I have no experience of it. Yeah. Uh, I'm just glad we got some wholesome content for your adversaries today. You know, if you want <laughs> if you want a version of that at a much lower stakes level, just have sex with your girlfriend if she has the flu. Oh, yeah. You, you know, uh, like you could just, you know... This is a quick aside, but I I tried to give the flu to a spider once. Uh, I, I was walking into my uh, my uh, apartment, and there was like the spider nest always. And there's this one fucking spider, man. This guy just like you know I, I've mentioned in the past on the show, but I don't like arrogant spiders. And this one seemed a little a little haughty. Uh-huh. Like so, he pays rent. Yeah, I didn't like this guy, so I decided to cough on the spider <laughs> every day when I'd go in and out of the apartment like for a week. I just cough on the little guy. And Maybe did he, he get? Got- did he get like sick? I couldn't tell. I put my ear up to it, and I couldn't yeah. hear any little spider. Cough. Seven of his legs were holding little tissues. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I hadn't been to your website in a long time, and uh, I came across the one where you were decapitating crickets and putting the oh. sticks on your front lawn. Yes, and correct. that was the only time I thought, "Is everything okay?" Like you've done a lot with that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was pretty out there. I did fry a cricket that I caught in my apartment. Um, yeah, but uh, taught him a lesson. I I will say though, I'm proud to announce I am finally cricket free. Yeah. Oh yeah, I haven't heard a cricket in here. No in a while. crickets. Yeah, fucked him up. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we should move on to the story. So I I before we get to the debate, I also want to mention two things. Right at the top of the show. We are broadcasting this live. We experimented with it last week. It was a huge hit. Everyone loved watching the live feed. And we're doing it again this week. We may continue doing this on Saturdays when we record. So if you are joining us in the chat room, say hello. And we'll be able to hang out a little bit afterwards and say hi to you guys. And you guys can see the setup as well. The pre-show as we're setting this whole thing up. And the other thing. Yeah, the pre-show 
wait, wait, why isn't this on? <laughs> I think somebody uh, said, oh, great, they're crowdsourcing audio engineering. <laughs> You guys figured out our game, our little <laughs> racket here. Uh, and one other note I want to mention is we got another fan package this week. Wow. We'll be opening that up after the debate. Super fun. And then at the tail end of the show, we've got some quick news headlines with Taylor. We've got some voicemail. A lot of show to cover. But let's get to the debate. Vin, we're going to be debating this week, is marketing evil? Let's hear everyone's buzzers before we begin. Here's mine. And Vin. And Ron. Great. If you hear a buzzer from anyone during this debate, that means someone is disagreeing with someone else or we're just chiming in with an interjection. But, Vin, as our guest this week, I'm going to give you first stab at the debate. Is marketing evil? Why or why not? So I don't think marketing is evil for the same reason um, that I have got here to the United States, in that it can really change people's lives if you are using marketing to grow your small business, if you use it to improve your family's life, if you use it for charitable or good causes. Um, so ultimately, you know when you're spamming or doing uh, unethical things, and Many have accused me of teaching people how to spam and do unethical things. Um, but the point is most people just won't do them. They just don't have the heart or the balls to do the things that are really um, you know, annoying to other people, especially at the small level. So basically, using marketing can be a force for good. Um, and it can change a lot of people's lives. And if it is an evil, it's a necessary one. Uh, because marketing is everywhere. The way you dress, you market yourself. Uh, everything you look at in life has been bought or sold. So marketing is necessary, and it can be used for good. Okay, interesting. Uh, so that's that's a there's a lot to unpack there, right from the get go. Because you said that there's a a lot of good that comes from marketing. Yeah. I would say that that's. A, a, a nuanced ar- this is a nuanced argument, but I would say that that's a little bit different than talking about marketing itself because at the core of marketing and why I have had a problem with a lot of different forms of marketing over the years is because some forms of marketing, not all, but some of them are just manipulative. They're very highly manipulative. Uh, for example, there have been laws that have been passed in the United States where you you know certain companies cannot market certain products to children. Or they have to market it in certain ways during certain hours, that sort of thing, because it was found that it was unethical to try to market their products directly to kids, especially if it was unhealthy, if it was something that uh, you know could be detrimental to their to their well being. What do you think about that? What do you think of? I mean, should there be any kind of regulations on marketing? So yeah, absolutely, there should. And working to the letter of the law, I completely agree with. But like a, a common problem, um, I guess the internet commenters don't like is marketing on TV shows, uh, Instagram channels, uh, podcasts, anything. Um, There's this feeling that everything should be free. And in fact, how are people going to monetize what they're doing without marketing, without advertising? So to give you an example, if you're into guitar music, there has barely been a single guitar band, let alone a guitar movement since 2010, because that whole market has gone to shit. So there will need to be more advertising, there will need to be more marketing, many changes will need to be made. But um, yes, working to the letter of the law is fine, but creatives need to eat, and, and marketing is one way of doing that. That, that's that's a good point. Uh, you know, you do have to sell your product. You have to do. You have to sell yourself on some level. I got a comment in the chat room. And someone said that I am apparently marketing hot sauce right now because I just I didn't realize it, but literally on my shirt is a Tabasco brand. <laughs> I am marketing Tabasco. But I mean, there is. I guess the the other distinction I would like to make, other than manipulation, because there is a lot of manipulation that goes on in marketing. And it's psychological. There's a lot manipulation. of manipulation in entertainment anyway. They well, put it, a hot girl on there, you, you start to fall in love with her on a TV show. The manipulation, again, is everywhere. Well, the manipulation for that happens, say, in entertainment, you know, like special effects, that's a form of manipulation. You're trying to fool somebody into thinking that something happened that they that didn't actually take place. Like Jurassic Park, for example. Those aren't real dinosaurs. Well, no, I mean, that, but that took place. <laughs> that's, Ron- a, that's a real thing. <laughs> it's a fucking documentary, you dicks. So, so, but let's talk about the manipulation that, that occurs in advertising. And I, I don't like this kind of stuff. There's a common theme in advertising over the last 10 years, I would say, 
really pay attention. Once you notice this, you'll never stop being able to notice it. So sorry for that. But there is a whistle soundtrack to almost every advertising, every comp- <laughs> every company. Yeah, it's a whistle soundtrack. And yeah, there is. Yeah. And it's very. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, it's like real upbeat and happy. Yeah, it's like. You know, it's just always like, like, and it, there's always like a doofy dad who doesn't know how to work the laundry. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. The, the, the wife looking at the camera, be like, "Can you believe I put up with him?" Right, right. So there is that kind of whistle soundtrack that that comes like hamburger helper ads do this, um, laundry detergent companies do this, car commercials do this. Now everybody's doing this. Whistle startups soundtrack. have started doing it too. Startups, yeah, everything. Any type of like slightly instructional video. Yeah. Like, just go to, like, www.com. Click here. It's always, like, kind of a whistle soundtrack. You're absolutely right. So let's think about why they... And the entire industry has moved towards the soundtrack. Well, it's because Big Whistle. Big Whistle. The Big Whistle lobby is trying to get their whistling soundtracks. Yeah. It's one person licensing all those whistles. He's a billionaire. Uh, (laughs) But... But really think of let's think about whistling, okay? Why whistling? Why is that the soundtrack of sales? Well, I thought about it really long and hard. Like, why is this the same theme? Why is everybody using it? It must be effective, and it is. It's because whistling is the most simple form of music that you can make, right? If you're just walking along, you whistle. It's very simple. You don't even have to think about singing. You don't have to be on tone. Every almost everybody can whistle. Whistle whistling is synonymous with simplicity. Okay, and so that's what they want to put in your mind. When you hear whistling, you think simple, easy, awesome, I'm in, right? And then the other thing that marketers are starting to do, and this is along the lines of the same manipulation, organic is a hot word in marketing, right? They market everything from, it used to be just food that was organic. Now, it's linens that are organic. It's the clothes that you wear, the shoes that you have. I've, I've seen shoes marketed as organic, why the fuck do I care if my shoes are organic? I'm walking on the fucking pavement with, like, stepping on dog shit and, and gum that people have spit out. I don't care if my shoes are organic. So, so uh, organic is, like, the hot marketing phrase. Well, what's the next word that they can use that's not organic? Because organic means something. It has to be FDA approved as organic, right? It means uh, certain regulations in the terms of uh, pesticides and things. Well, the other word they started using in place of organic Woke. Is- Nope, not not woke. Oh. Truth. Okay? Because people associate organic with honesty, openness. So now if they want to market something and get that same dollar as organic, they'll use the word truth. Or they'll call it uh simple. Simple's another one. They'll literally call their product simple or truth or um uh honest. You know, there's honest tea. So when they when they put that phrase in your mind, it's all it's all in the same wheelhouse as whistling. As organic, as simple, because that's what people want. But is that evil? Or are you just describing something that's really effective? It's effective, but it's manipulative. And and yes, I would say that uh, uh, there's something dishonest about manipulation, right? Well, I think it's because the fact that most people seem to be unaware of the effects of advertisements or marketing on them. People don't like to think that they're controlled, like that they people like to think they're making their own decisions. So they're like, oh well, yeah, I see ads, but they don't like affect me. When in yeah. reality, they do. So I think that that's the part where people are kind of blissfully unaware of how much you're being marketed to. Um, sometimes knowingly, like you're watching a TV show and there's an advertisement, but sometimes unknowingly, like there was a story of the people in New York who had, um, they worked for a company uh, with a phone and they would ask people on New York to stop. Be like, Hey, can you take a picture of me and my boyfriend? And people would stop. And the person taking the picture was just a random New Yorker. And they'd be like, Oh wow, this is a new phone. I haven't seen this one. And they're like, Oh yeah, it's a great phone. It's a, and it was like this gorilla style marketing where that's to try and spread like a word of mouth wow. campaign, which is super nefarious as shit, but also probably really fucking effective because the whole, you know, like a voucher from a person in life is yeah. way, way more valuable than, you know, a radio ad. It's or a something. personal endorsement. Maddox, I, I would ask, what is the line where it becomes manipulative? The line when it becomes manipulative is when they are preying on your cognitive biases and your psychological weaknesses to take advantage of you to get some money. So that's why I don't have a problem with it in entertainment because the end result there is to make you either 
amused or to laugh or to be scared slightly, like whatever the form of medium you're consuming. But the end result of marketing sometimes, especially manipulative marketing, is to take money from you. And that's why that's a, it's almost like a, a story, a con. You know, it sounds like a con where they tell you a story that convinces you to give them money. I mean, what is a cage-free egg, really? What the fuck is a cage-free hen? It's a narrative. You never meet that fucking hen. You don't know anything about it. You just want this idea in the back of your mind that you bought an egg and somewhere some fucking hen was taken care of to produce that egg. But whether or not that actually occurred is, first of all, unknowable. And, and second, irrelevant. You're still eating the fucking egg, and that narrative makes no difference in the end result of your breakfast. Okay. I mean, I, uh, my buddy once had a point about this where he's like, you know, we're killing... We're killing the happy chickens. <laughs> like, shouldn't we be killing the chickens that are in the cage yeah. to put them out of the misery? Here we're giving a little chicken, like a little <laughs> bit of a, a window, like, hey, this is what life is like without cages. Yeah. Enjoy your freedom. Get right. the fuck over here. Right. I Alex, agree. Didn't you once say the cows are happy? They're in a big room with all their friends. They get, <laughs> they get a head full of drugs. <laughs> Vin, real deep old school reference. Oh, yeah, I, man. I said that in a in a hate mail response. I think to uh, Peta, somebody from Peta emailed me. The cows are happy. They're all with their friends. They're hanging out. Yeah, they're cool. It's a social environment. Get all the food and drugs they could ever want. Yeah, C- yeah. you put a cow in the fucking ca- uh, you know, a pen, or you put a cow in a fucking field. It makes no difference. Yeah, cow- if, you, if you put me in a giant room with all my friends and told me there's as much drugs as you want, <laughs> food, and I just take whatever you want. We do that bu- shit. And anywhere i'm right. like wow this is an awesome resort we do that voluntarily all the time we go to parties it's just a bunch of our <laughs> friends and drugs like <laughs> but Matt, maddox i don't think that you're you're giving an <laughs> you're not giving an alternative so like you basically the top-down argument you're giving is that consumerism is bad or basically kind of in a way capitalism is bad because in some ways you're saying new products or services shouldn't even be invented and sold because everything you could possibly need already exists Uh oh i haven't played this in a while straw man <laughs> argument taylor that's not at all what i'm saying i i you used whistling though yeah. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> Simple straw man argument. Okay, I'll let you finish your point, though. No, that's kind of the the, the point I'm making. Is it's just like for a new product or service to exist in a capitalist society, there needs to be branding. There needs to be marketing. You need a reason to buy that thing because everything like we all are surviving on a daily basis right now. So everything we could possibly need already exists. So a new thing need you need to be told why you need that new thing in a consumerist or capitalist society. OK, good point. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you the difference between good marketing and bad marketing and why I think that some marketing is definitely evil. A good marketing is the type of marketing I do. Uh, <laughs> here's I've, I've said this classically. When I first created a store on my website, right? I don't put ads on my website. People still, to this day, they have ad blockers running and they come to my website, but they forget that I don't even have ads. You can go to my website, turn off your ad blocker. You're not going to see anything. It's not going to make a difference. So when I created my online store, people thought, oh, man, Maddox is selling out. Oh, Maddox is selling shirts. You guys need to understand the difference between selling and selling out. Selling is things that I'm doing on my website. I'm offering you a product for a fair price, and I'm telling you what it is. What you see is what you get, and I'm offering it to you for a fair price. Selling out is compromising one's principles for money. That's the difference between selling and selling out. So the proper way to market something is you offer a consumer a product that uh, uh, that fits a need that they may want, and then offer it to them at a fair price. You don't try to trick them into buying or giving you their money. You say support the show. Is that a form of manipulation? No, it's very frank. It's very forthright. I'm asking you to support the show. If you guys like what you're listening to, support the show. Very fr- very uh, frank and forthright. What do you think, Vin? Do you think that that's effective marketing? Do you think that that's ethical marketing? Or do you think that there's no distinction between uh, what, I'm, what I'm saying here? Well, as a marketer, it's my job to find things that work. It's not my job to say whether they're morally right or wrong. Oh, interesting. Okay. Whoa. Well, here we go. I'm going to do one of these just because I didn't like what you said. It wasn't even wrong. Uh, <laughs> I will say this. I used to work for a telemarketing company. Telemarketing, right? The word marketing's right in there. And I hated it. 
I hated the industry I was in. I knew it was a bad industry. What were you selling? We were selling all sorts of shit. Well, some of it was okay. Some of it, I'll tell you, one of the products we sold was Omaha Steaks. And, uh, you know, for those of you who aren't familiar... Would you want your meat to come through the mail, <laughs> Omaha Steaks? <laughs> Omaha Steaks are very high-quality meats, and, and the customers love them. We sold so much Free Omaha. Free-range uh, oxes or, or whatever it was made from? Uh, Grass-fed probably is what the narrative is now. They're all 3D printed. But uh, Oma- Omaha Steaks are really high-quality steaks, really high-quality meats. Why am I fucking selling these fucking steaks? I'm not... <laughs> 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 Uh, but I, I, you know, Omaha Steaks was one of them, but some of the other products we sold were pure bullshit. And I will tell you right now, I can spot them a mile away because telemarketing is essentially dead. They passed the, uh, the DNC. The do not call. Do not call list. Yeah. The DNC. L. You guys get calls all the fucking time. Just add yourself to that list again. And they do honor those no they they're doing a workaround on them now now they have this it's a whole thing i was listening to podcasts about it but that's why you're getting a bunch of phone calls right now that's like kind of like your number like i oh, my number yeah. is area code 818 and then it'll use the first three numbers yes and then the last four numbers will be a little bit different yeah. and you at first you think like who's this like the dry cleaner down the street or something so you yeah. pick it up and it's like hey man you uh you you, you want a vacation and you're and they keep doing they they're somehow skirting around the rule. There's like a loophole they're using. I get at least eleven of these calls a day. I never answer my phone. Yeah, yeah, I've noticed those as well. One thing that telemarketers started doing. So they passed a law. I think Congress passed a law in like nineteen ninety nine or two thousand or something like that, where you couldn't place marketing calls to the United States if the origin of that call was from an international. Uh, country, right? So that means no telemarketing calls from Canada, from China, from Russia. You, they can't sell us products into this into this country. So uh, how we got around that, how the telemarketing industry got around that, is you still get calls from people in India all the time. Oh, we just call from the U.S. first? Exactly. So we put the router in the U.S., we route it out to India, and then route it back to the U.S. So the origin country of that call is is technically the United States, even though you're talking to someone in India. What do you feel about... This is the thing that I think of when people say marketing is evil, is that we're giving up all of our, like, privacy. You know, a lot of... That's, like, kind of the thing now, is that, you know, we've given up all of our information, and people are using that information to market to us. But part of me is, like, my initial knee-jerk reaction is, like, yeah, man, fuck that. All my information should be private, even though I've freely and publicly gave it up on my own accord. But, like... Isn't it nice just to have things marketed to you that you're just interested in? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I kind like I think my generation is creeped out with it, but I think if I were to have kids and they grew up with this, they'd be like, "Yeah, I only want shit that is marketed to me and for me." And I think the thing that people hate about that is it makes you realize that you're not special. You're <laughs> you're just a, another version. Like we're all different versions and we all tick different boxes and people don't like to think that they fall into a specific category, but really like we all kind of do. Well, okay. So the, the easy argument that I can give to that is that you, you fall into an echo chamber or, or a bubble and, and like one of the, the cool things about like watching TV for me at least is that I'm introduced to all these things that I'm like, wow, that's like a, a thing in culture right now, or that's a TV show that's coming out soon because I'm, I, I'm online on facebook etc like i'm constantly bombarded with things that i've already visited like i I visit a website so then they're able to track me through pixels or cookies or whatever and then constantly bombard me in the future so then i'm constantly being fed all of the stuff that i might have even accidentally clicked on a website one time i think that it's very important to be constantly introduced to what other things exist in the in the world you so basically you said you your job as a marketer was to not focus on what the product or service was being sold, but only to be to care about the process. Not exactly. It's 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 like if someone asked me this marketing technique, do you think it's morally wrong? Uh, I said that's none of my business. It's my job as an effective marketer to say whether it works or it doesn't work. That that's the only metric that that matters. The the product itself is actually a different conversation. Well, that is a very honest answer. It's a very honest, and I think that is at the end of the day. Um, what I think some people have a problem with. And I I personally had a problem with this when I was at the telemarketing company. Here's the story I wanted to tell. I would sell this product. Like There was a product called Privacy Guard 
okay? And it already sounds real bullshitty because it is. <laughs> it's basically just the credit bureaus who sell you a service where they supposedly monitor your credit reports or whatever. And give you mean you- there's not a guy like just like biting his fingernails looking at my credit report <laughs> constantly? That's what they make it seem like. No, it's just 24/7 like- 24-7 credit monitoring. Yeah, it's supposed to be something like that. And it's all the credit bureaus, like the independent credit bureaus. There were three of them at the time. It was TRW, Equifax, and TransUnion. And these three companies had a a virtual monopoly. Now I think it's just two. I think it's Equifax and TransUnion. By law, they have to give you your credit report for free. At least one time per year, you are allowed to get your credit report. And they, they would call people and try to sell them the service that was essentially free anyway. I remember sometimes I'd get connected to an old lady. And I was just talking to her. And I was just going through my pitch. <laughs> I was I had my my pitch so memorized and so down I could shut my eyes and just lean back in my chair and say the entire thing it was like pages and pages of script completely memorized. And by the end of the script this old lady sounded like she was confused. And she sometimes I say, "Well, with your permission, I'd like to confirm your your name and address to send you, send this out to you." We don't even tell tell them that this is going to be a sale. We're just confirming her name and address to send this out to them. It's a very manipulative way of making a sale. And sometimes the old lady says, "Sure, okay, yeah, but that's that's how so, it's spelled." Because well, like, that sounds like them- sales, not marketing. <sighs> Okay, I'll give you a point on that. <laughs> I'll give you a point on that. Um, that's that that is just hard sales. I really didn't like it though, and and oftentimes when it sounded like the person I was talking to was confused or didn't know what they were buying, I would make it clear to them that they were buying something that they understood what they were doing before I went ahead and went and processed that sale because I didn't feel right about taking their money, even though it wasn't going to me or anything. I just felt like it was a shady type of thing where we would talk to people who didn't understand what they were buying or what they were se- uh, you know what we were selling. But I guess that's that's right. you're a, that is a distinction. But couldn't I make the same argument, Vin, is that at the end of the day, my job was to make to to be effective was to make sales. Yes, okay. But the, then, then the morality and ethics again don't come into it. I, I mean, when do the morality and ethics yeah. come into it? Then, uh, th- that's the case you have to make to me. I mean, like at some point, like somebody's got to like just say, "Hey, guys, what we're doing is kind of fucked up." Well, I, I mean, my problem is is a larger one with morality um, in that it's a set of moving goalposts. Well, what people think in the Middle East is right, cutting off people's heads and all that, we don't think is right over here. And and they would argue. A lot of people lit- in the Middle East also don't think cutting off heads is all right. <laughs> <laughs> like just just as a, as very extreme I understand, example. What I understand what you're saying. Yeah. So it's not a, uh, they literally fight to the death for you know for for these rights that we find abhorrent, and vice versa. Many of the things we do, yeah. they find abhorrent. So I don't think morality is a good argument for anything. That's why, although I don't smoke pot, I love that pot is being legalized across America because that is a win for health and economics versus pure morality. Uh, cannabis has many good health benefits, and it's been brilliant for states like Colorado there for bringing are, in taxes. But then that that, that kind of lends itself to saying, well, we can't ever really decide what is immoral. But I think some of the practices we have, like marketing payday loans, you know, payday lenders, yeah. and where we're doing these like kind of short term loans with it, like crazy high interest rates, and not really giving people the information, being like, "Hey, yeah, we're going to give you five hundred dollars now," but not really telling them, "Oh, yeah, but in six months you're going to be ended up paying two thousand dollars." Like, there's a, something like even though it's effective and it's a huge industry, and the people of that industry think they're doing something good because they're the only ones who are giving loans to this segment of the population because it's too risky for traditional banks to do so. But I would still make the case that it's like, yeah, but that's still fucked up what you're doing because you're not really giving people all the information. But then know? if they're not giving all the information, they're breaking the law. If they are giving the information... But they give the information in a way like every time I call my bank to have... Oh, I fucking, I fucking love this. I call my bank, right? I'm fired up about something. Yeah, you got a tangent coming at you. <laughs> And I'm like, hey, man, I have this like ATM fee. Like, I didn't know my account got ATM fees. And the first thing they go, oh, well, sir, when you signed up for the account, did you receive the terms and services agreement? I'm like, you mean that 
the thing from 12 years ago, <laughs> then they always hide behind that. Yeah. Like the terms and services, that 30 page document that nobody reads. And it's such a bullshit thing. It's like, yeah, we told you. No, you didn't tell us in plain English. It's 30 pages long. It was 12 years ago. Suck all the dicks. Give me my 250 back. And yeah, I called about $2.50. <laughs> well, that, that's a product problem, not a marketing problem. I'm like I'm a little confused because I feel like what's marketing? Yeah, hold on there, Vin. Because at the top of this, you said everything is marketing. Essentially, you're always marketing yourself. So in in a sense, weren't they marketing their services and their terms of service? Well, in fact, if there's a negative user experience, that is negative marketing. If you go and tell your friends that it's bad, oh, I just told everybody about it. It's so, super bad. So in that sense. Um, having a good user experience and being good to your customers is a good idea because your customers are your best source of marketing. And marketers have to um, have to weigh up the pros and cons. To give you an example, I'm going to use, liberally use the word allegedly here, but it, it's, it's allegedly true. Uh, LinkedIn, uh, in the early days, they had to get your address book. Um, and they, they had this unbelievable UX system where every time you clicked, no, I don't want to give you my address book, it just came up again in eight different ways. Uh, there's a few articles on this. And because of this and a few other things, uh, they were fined something like $35 million. Um, like It was one of the few companies who did very negative user experience um, in order to get the address book. But they, they must have weighed up the pros and cons of that. They were bought for like $35 billion in the end. So they knew that people going, I can't believe LinkedIn took my address book. That was a, sh a short drop in the ocean versus what they got in return. So companies are always aware what is the potential upside uh, for doing these negative things. It's known as dark user experience. There's a subreddit called asshole design that does the same thing. Like when it's like you accept the terms and conditions and we're also allowed to market to you in one box. They, they shouldn't do that. Wow. That, that. That's very negative user design. Yeah. But they have to weigh up you telling your friend is that negative versus how much do they get in return of it. So that that's a product Mark decision. Then are you a moral relativist in everything or just marketing? Um, that's a good question. Um, I, I believe that um, we should... The answer is that's a good question. The answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I mean, we we should not hurt each other. Um, like No FX once said, the uh, the rules of a better world were written on a postage stamp. I don't fuck with you, don't fuck with me. I think that's a good rule to live by. But I, I mean, I I think there's a level of if you're arguing from a point of moral relativism, this whole conversation's pointless because we're not going to get anywhere. Right. That's that's difficult because there is no objective morality, right? Would you agree with that? Well, that that's why I, I'm saying yeah. it's not about morality. It's about economics. It's about ones and zeros as much as possible. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I wanted to... Uh, barring uh, your last point about asshole design, I screen grabbed every time... Uh, how many times Facebook asks you to allow notifications oh. on your phone? Yeah, I know. Uh -huh. All right? Works. So I got the first one. Please turn on notifications with an arrow pointing to OK. Or you click not now, which is not even no. No. <laughs> no, not now. It's like, fuck you. No. Me, so yeah. You go on to the next one. And it goes, text anyone in your phone. Learn more or okay. And then, like, you kind of, like, which doesn't you even give you an option. Either, yeah, you don't want to learn more. That sounds horrible. So then you get on that. Then it goes, you're on Messenger. Turn on notifications. Otherwise, you go, not now again. And then it goes, continue without notifications. And then it's like, you might miss messages. And it goes, turn on notifications or continue without. So I continue without. And then they finally let you in. And they do that all the time. It will log you does, out right? of Messenger. And then you got to go through that bullshit every single time. You know what, Ron? Fucking A, man. Fuck Facebook. Fuck Facebook Messenger. Taylor's been trying to get me on this shit. I have... I I'm not trying to, I, well, like, it's just true. an easier way to communicate. It absolutely fucking isn't, Taylor. The other <laughs> night, I was I wanted to have a conversation with Taylor, and I'm like, all right, I'll call you. He goes, um, why don't, why don't we use uh, Facebook? Uh, and I'm like, <laughs> what? what? It's the, like, make a phone call? Yeah. Who the I, fuck does that, Taylor? So, I, I do that. Oh, yeah, you, you fucking marketers. Ner yeah, you fucking uh, uh, nerds. So then I, we I tried. Wanted to see, I wanted to see his face. Like, that's where I'm coming from. You but didn't, like, you, but like, I, you didn't even see my face because I. I know, because you didn't have it installed. Yeah, because I'm not going to fucking install an app so I can make a phone call. My phone already has that. It's called the phone. Like, I just dial your number and we're connected. It's cool. And then also... Uh, can I interject? Yes. 
with Facebook allowing people to do phone calls all across Wi-Fi, that allows poor people who can't afford to pay their phone bill the chance to speak to their loved yes, ones. Yes, poor people who do can't you hate afford poor people. Do, poor people who can't afford to to, uh, to pay their phone bills, but can afford a computer and internet connection. They go to McDonald's. Okay, look, I'm Bad not wife, saying there isn't a use can't for afford it. afford a small coffee. I, I, I've I, mentioned this in the past. I have aunts in Syria uh, who I'm constantly worried about because of the war that's been going on, the chemical tax and all that shit. And sometimes the only way I, I know that they're alive is because they send me a message on Facebook. I get it. There we go. But f- Taylor and I tried to connect three times over fucking Facebook, and it kept <laughs> dropping. The call quality was bad. It's shit. And then they do this garbage where they're like, oh, well, do you uh, want to connect now or okay, yeah. learn later? Why don't you leave everything? in your phone can we just take a peek I yeah mean, like, why can we take a peek i'm not afraid to say like i prefer um video chat over phone calls because i feel like there's so many nuances that come with facial expressions and we needed to talk about something kind of important that night and i wanted to see and read his facial expressions to see if he was actually agreeing with me or if he was just saying he agreed with me in order to like satisfy me and get me to shut up because i was trying to talk him into something and he just needed to like i i, I... were you guys like trying to figure out a threesome <laughs> it kind of sounds like all right this is a tangent i'm not interested in your, your oh, love oh, is uh, tiff yeah well that <laughs> see that is uh that is ron's job on the show he's the first tangent officer <laughs> so that's what he does anyway it up. fucking facebook fucking facebook but i, I think to- <laughs> that it's absolutely absurd to say that you should never care about the process of marketing. I, I care about the process basically, of more than anyone. Basically, that is an argument to say any politician can do anything because if it's effective. You're saying that a, a politician, you're, you're saying the ends justify the means. You're saying a politician well, can lie to you if it gets more votes. Um, that's So when you use the word you're saying, normally the person is not saying that. <laughs> if you watched any Jordan Peterson, you'd understand that. Um, so, so again... Trump takes the risk where um, he takes the risk that he may be found out just as LinkedIn and Facebook take the similar risks. Uh, so, again, they're not saying whether it's right or wrong. They take the risk of the potential upside. And, and that's a decision they make. They're hedging their bets. Yeah. So, again, it's not it's it's not for me to say whether it's right or wrong, but it's, it's whether it works or it doesn't. Yes. Work. Again, you're, you're going back to the, the same argument of the ends justify the means. Like, I, I do you do you think that lying, therefore, can be a good thing but you good is a moral word can lying be an effective thing yes well okay so, uh, I, an example i like to come come to sometimes is uh people people criticize al gore after he came out with that movie an inconvenient truth because he was going on and on about global warming and uh you know the effects of a carbon footprint etc cetera, etc cetera. then someone did some research you know people politically opposed to him on the right, they did some research and found that Al Gore was taking lots of trips around the U.S. In fact, way more than the average person, hundreds per year, right? Because it's part of his job. People pointed that as like, oh, hey, hypocrite, uh, why are you flying around if you... Because flying is the most highly pollute... Like, it's one of the most pollutive... What's the word? Um, Pollutable. Pollutable? No. <laughs> I don't know what the word is, but it creates the most pollution when you fly. Ah, uh, Polonius. Pol- <laughs> <laughs> so Al Gore was, they're they like, oh, you hypocrite. But he could easily make the case that the ends justify the means. He had to fly to get his message out, which uh, aggregately will have a more positive Correct. effect. 100%. Are you saying, is that the type of argument you're making yeah. here? Yeah, absolutely. So this is kind of, this is almost like a libertarian argument because. Yes. Ah, okay. So here and we. By go. the way, so everybody doesn't call me an idiot. Ly- lying can be good sometimes. I guess in that situation, I was saying lying from a politician. But back to what you were saying. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. There's, uh, you're, you're, you're referring to like white lies, that sort of thing. Taylor? Right, right, right. Yeah. And I, I just didn't want people to listen and be like, Taylor's an idiot because I understood what I was saying. I still think you're an idiot. <laughs> Ron does think you're an idiot. Uh. So you're saying this is a libertarian type argument? It is a libertarian, libertarian type argument. The CrossFit of politics. <laughs> Soul cycle. We talked to, last week, right before the show, too, I said libertarianism is like the veganism of politics. Yeah, that, yeah that that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. The, the veganism of politics. Um, because because you'll find out if someone's a libertarian real fast. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, there's no secret libertarians in the world. So so I used to have a different philosophy on money. I used to think that money, you know, they say money's the root of all evil. I no longer think that. I think that money is neutral. Money is something you can do some good with, or you can do some bad with. So, but if your goal is just to make money, then sometimes that comes at the expense of other people. Do you think that that's bad? 
you'd have to be more specific with the argument, I think. Well, so for example, let's say I found an easy way to make a buck, all right? And I have this way to make a buck. There is a, a lot of homeless encampments in Los Angeles. And some of the reason these people are homeless is because of alcoholism. It's very easy to sell an alcoholic some alcohol, especially if they're depressed. The, if the market has no money to buy, then it, it's a bad market. No, they have enough money. I mean, they'll find, they'll scrounge enough money. Um, I, I'd like to bring this back to marketing. We, we've, we've gone way off point here. This is this has gone way past me. Well, I mean, th- what if I what if I did market alcohol to homeless people? Do you think that's unethical? Do you think that's evil? That's that that would be that would not be something I would do. That would be something that you would have to live with within your own conscience. Um, and the question of marketing is: Would the marketing be effective or not? Uh, as a pure thing. So is the marketing just kind of like everything up to the point of sale? Loosely speaking, yes. Okay. I just want to get a frame for marketing, because and then the sale is and, and like the it, acting after. It stops in uh, legality. It's still legal to do what you said you were going to do. If it was illegal, then obviously Actually, it would be... Actually, no, you probably would need a liquor to... license. I would need a liquor yeah, license. So he, 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 but he, he, I, get I, that. I think most people would have a huge problem... You know, let's talk about uh, morality and whether or not, you know, the, the debate here is, is marketing evil? Mm-hmm. Well, evil or good is defined largely by the culture we're in, right? In Islamic countries, they would say that uh, exposing your skin, like with a bathing suit, like a swimsuit, that, that would be an evil for them, right? Because For any, yeah. any number of reasons. That, that's why I have an issue with with um, with, with that. And I, I think the law, generally speaking, holds up the idea of good and evil very well. So I, I, I like to work with law as something that's good and evil. Occasionally they get it wrong, such as the drug war. But by and large, the, the law is good for protecting people. Well, so that's, yeah, to an extent. But there's so many laws that uh, that we don't have. There's so many ways that people are taken advantage of and, and used and manipulated. But this concept of manipulation is really something I, I have a problem with. If they are deceiving you, right, It's dis- manipulation is deception. You are taking advantage of somebody's cognitive disability. Deception is against the law. What deception is? Deception is against the law. I can't say in my ads, buy my course and or, or buy my new book, Ace the Game, and you're guaranteed to make $100,000. The, the uh, FTC would go after me if I said that statement. So you, you cannot lie in, in deception. I can say you have the possibility of, of making $100,000 in 20 different ways of my book, which is true. Right. You have to put in the work there. Okay, that's true. Well, what if what if I market my product? Okay, let's say I have a product. Say I'm going to sell you a way, uh, like an educational course. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm going to sell you an educational course, and I'm going to say, this is how you be a bestseller. Okay? You couldn't, you couldn't say that. The FTC would have you for that. Okay. Well, then uh, maybe I market it like this then, so it would be accurate. I'll say, this, this is how you have a chance to become a bestseller. Yeah. And, uh, but I don't disclose what that chance is. What if that chance is less than 1%? It, but, it, it is less than 1%. Right. 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 But I don't market it that way. I just say, you have a chance to be a bestseller. Kind of like, hey, you have a chance to be a millionaire, like the lottos, like the uh, lottery tickets. Do you think lotto, lotto tickets are uneth- unethical? No, because people win every week. Yeah, but uh, relatively zero, you know. The- it's if if in talking in binary it's zeros and ones, people do win, and it does change the lives of people who win it from all over America. But it also changes the lives of people who don't win it, like it, who it, play yeah. it every single week for their entire life. You know, it's like a waste of money. I, I like. I, I think the easiest way to say that what your idea is is stupid is that laws can't necessarily always keep up with the speed of the internet. And like what we're seeing this in in real time with all this Cambridge Analytical stuff is is people know that that's unethical or wrong or immoral or whatever adjective you want to use, but the laws haven't kept up for that. So we're recognizing that it's wrong to do, and the laws are needing to come after ex post facto. Or is mm-hmm. that the word ex post facto? The, the law know. always catches up. It's expe- yeah, but no, no. But it's your argument is patronum. <laughs> if your argument is I will do everything that's lawful, then you're saying that you have these things that you know might be wrong, but I guess we just go back to this moral relativism thing. Your opinions... You're going to need to define moral relativism for Maddox's fans who normally eat tacos and watch Rick and Morty. Oh, correct. They are dumb. (laughs) Uh 
<laughs> uh, please and what's wrong with tacos and Rick and Morty? <laughs> Rick and Morty to me is like the Grateful Dead. Like I love Rick and Morty. I just don't want to talk to people. Like like yeah, you know the yeah, Grateful yeah. Dead. Like I don't want to talk about it. I we, just want to enjoy the thing. We got a voicemail about uh, about the Grateful Dead. In a bit, but uh, yeah, let's define that real quick. And I also want to make make a note about uh, marketing, the, like the types of marketing I've done on this show because I've had many sponsors in the past. My personal line on ethics when it comes to sponsorship is I don't take any money from any product I don't support or believe yeah, in. Likewise. And, great. And that's a fantastic, I think that's a good way to to live your life. I've had many, many companies I've had on this uh, this podcast. I've worked with, uh, uh, one of my first sponsors was this company called Kendall and Hyde. And they were a leather company, leather goods company. And they did fantastic products. And then I've worked with uh, Harry's Razors and uh, Casper. Casper is a, a sponsor as well. And I still sleep on a Casper mattress. I love it. Me too. I fully endorse it. And one of them was uh, candid. For audience members that don't understand moral relativism, the most basic concept that you can understand moral relativism by is that moral relativists do not believe in objective truth. Am I a relativist? Yes, you are a moral... No, I believe in objective Sometimes. truth. You guys are... No, a moral you, relativist... You guys are evaluating... A moral it. relativist, by definition, does not believe that objective truth can exist. But I, 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 I think... I, I feel like I'm the opposite. I'm saying what's true is whether it works or not. You're saying, but it gives me a weird feeling inside, so it must be bad. Th that's not truth. But we're talking about two different things. You're talking about effectiveness versus yeah. whether something is good or effectiveness bad. Effectiveness is truth. Over here, you've got, uh, should we wear the headscarf? You know, that, that's an evaluation to be But again, I, I go back to it, it just because something is effective doesn't necessarily mean that it's good. Like there there are arguments that can be made that extremely evil, cruel acts are good illegal. because they're effective. They're illegal. Well, do you do you think that uh, laws just by default are moral? Do you think that laws are are good? Well, firstly, we, we have to abide by laws. Um, but secondly, um, I, I don't think that generally laws are bad. But I think that there are cases where it, there are certain things that are allowed by law that are definitely like evil. And I'll, I'll go back to like the whole payday loans, <laughs> the way their whole system is set up and the way they prey on people. It'd be better not to give people that money. I mean, in to the not most... have that to satisfy their short term debt, whatever it is to a mechanic or some debt collector than to lock them into paying that loan back to payday loans. I say that was worse because that has a longer lasting mark than whatever else they're dealing with. And not to get too dark, but like the the easiest concept it, to me is slavery is objectively wrong. There was a time in this country when it was lawful to own a slave. Ah, oh, such a good time. Like, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Like, like, no one can give me an argument that it is uh, th there is not a plausible argument to be made that slavery is ever objectively right and therefore if it was the law at a point in time well, law the, the can be wrong the product or service was wrong but um we 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 we're kind of moving away from marketing, marketing yeah so um, I do want to read a couple of comments in the in the People chat. People get room. into it; it's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, there's a lot of comments in the chat room. We got one from uh, Nomad says manipulation is way more general than that. Uh, Catherine says, "Look up manipulation. There are two definitions. There's manipulation that isn't unscrupulous." Moros says, "I manipulate myself on lonely nights. Is that unscrupulous?" <laughs> That's I'm just fun. two people it's a short fun of read. <laughs> We got one from Nomad. He says, "I mean, you need food to live. You don't need McDonald's or Pizza Hut in particular, though." Uh, that's a, I think that's a good point. You know, the things that you market aren't necessarily good for people. What if you market a product that you know? It, 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 how about this? How about this, Vin? Maybe we can find some middle ground here. If you know your product is bad for people, but you're still marketing it. But th the idea of bad is a evaluation, not an observation. Uh, the girl just broke up with a boyfriend. That Domino's could really cheer her up, and then that gives her fuel to go on Tinder and find the next one. You know, so like it's I not see, always I bad; see. it's not always good. Yeah, I see. So what he you're doesn't saying. even believe the word evil. It, like you don't believe anything can be evil. Then, uh, e evil things tend to be illegal. But again, because of uh, I always use the Middle East and the West. Like they believe some things are evil; we believe some things are evil. So it it can't have an absolute definition. Though you know, I I believe in not doing harm to others. But we have our definition. 
like we we have but, our but agreed who's, on uh, who's to say that that's the right one that that's that's because we I as have. a culture have decided at this point in time that this is the, like we need to be, I, I just we need to base our decisions from England to America for instance so what what definition do I hold wait well I think we share a lot more in common with England but that there's there's still a difference but we need but but this the way you're saying is like that we can't base our actions on anything because is there because it's all relative. So nothing can be real. Yeah, we're we're basically going in circles. Yeah, yeah. At this point. Well, this is a, this is interesting. I'm I'm curious to see what the the chat room. Vin, I think on your side of the debate, though, uh, I, I'm curious to see what the vote is next week. But on, I, I think on your side of the debate, it's pretty easy to make the argument that if you market effectively, you will make more sales, yeah. and with those sales, you can use that as a force for good. Correct. Okay, so that I think in a nutshell is the I do argument. think marketing is like anything else and this comes come up a bunch. It's like it's a tool and you can use a tool for good or for evil. Just because something can be used for evil doesn't make the whole tool bad. I will say this though, uh, something that Taylor said earlier that I think I agree with or maybe you did you did Vin, which is there are new products and services that come out and people need to know about them. I think that that's fair. Those, that's a fair type, a fair form of marketing. Uh, and I've, I've actually marketed an app on this show before. Uh, it was called Candid. And the, co- the company's no longer around. The company, I think it was an experiment in, in trying to figure out Candid. If... <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Sorry to diss the person. Uh, but it was it was kind of a, a chat application that allowed people to communicate anonymously. You could not create a username. Every oh, I think I remember this. Like people, yeah, like would like people could send anonymous messages to people. Right, right. I remember that was like a hot thing on Facebook for a week, and everybody was like, "Yeah, I just got a bunch of like really nice compliments." Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. We all thought it was going to be this terrible thing. That's what I thought too. I thought it was going to be this terrible thing, you know, the the worst of the internet. And it was an experiment, I think, in in artificial intelligence moderation. Uh, it would look for things like, uh, you know, doxing and uh, abusive messages, racist messages and things like that. It would filter some of those out. But more or less, the communication on this platform was very productive. And now you know that this that was a totally sincere ad when I sponsored them on the show because uh, you know months and months after the company is no longer around the, the app is no longer available I'm still promoting the app <laughs> I absolutely loved it so when I when I promote something on this show I stand behind it and speaking of today's <laughs> <laughs> how's that for an ad read speaking of today's episode is brought to you by Nutrafol guys this episode is sponsored by Nutrafol to get your first month supply with subscription for $10, visit Nutrafol.com. Guys, Nutrafol is a whole new approach to healthy hair growth. Now, this is uh, this is kind of interesting. Wait, what are they saying? Why should I grow hair? Yeah, so I'm very comfortable with uh, how I look and my hair growth. I, I have, I've had like thinning hair. Some would say bald for a long time. Ron, you as well. What do you mean? What? What, uh, are, what are you Ron, saying? You uh, you don't have you got a little. No, I have hair. I have yeah. hair all over my head. Yeah, there's just some, some spots just, where I don't. Yeah, just like the top. I actually have one hair, <laughs> one hair uh, that grows on the front of my head, like right where a unicorn horn would be, and it grows like it's making up for lost time. It grows like all the final resources of the front of my head go into this one hair. Yeah, that's right. the only hair I can grow is that one hair. Well, you know what? Maybe that'll uh, that'll change with Nutrafol. Uh, this is... Tell me more. <laughs> yeah, this is actually unlike some hair care products, some some hair growth. products, products they actually have a formula for men and women right from the get-go they've they've done this Nutrafol is formulated with 100% drug-free ingredients clinically shown to improve hair growth and I'm trying it guys this Shut is gonna up. Be, Are yeah you? I'm going to I'm going to start trying it and I think we'll report back. I think it's supposed to work in like 45 to 90 days. We're going to cut to you like next week. We're going to have a full <laughs> pompadour, like just a giant head of hair. I'll, I'll say this. Like I've always been comfortable with the way I look, like the, the hair and security. When, did you, when did you start losing your hair? I started, it was it was noticeable. You can even look at pictures of me 10 years ago and I had uh, like a decent amount of hair, probably about as much as Taylor has. And uh, I, I'd say about 10 years ago, I re- it really started accelerating. See, mine was at age 20. It started going like oh, wow. fast and hard. And by 24, it was like a buddy just was like, dude, you should shave it. And I, I did. And I never looked back. But I'm lucky because I have a, a, g- a good shaped head. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's important. And it, it, for, some, for some men, it's always been like a source of uh, insecurity. But I will say this. I do want hair for the following reason. And it's just oh. one thing I've always wanted to thing? do. I want to have 
a Zangief mohawk. And I, I swear to God, if I'm able to grow hair, this is going to be, th- guys, this is a serious, huge announcement right here on this podcast. If I'm able to grow hair, I'm going to shave it down into a Zangief mohawk, and I'm going to change my lifestyle. I'm going to be buff. I'm going to be fit. I'm going, and I'm going to look like Zangief. I am going to transform oh, myself into Zangief. That. That's amazing. So in 45 that. to 90 days, if this works, and I think you'll see the results over the course of this uh, podcast. Right. I think Even if it only kind of works on you, I think you should still do it. It's going to be awesome. I've wanted to look like... You know, that's the only thing I've ever wanted is a mohawk. Uh, I, I think if I had hair, I would have a mohawk. And I'm going to try Nutrafol, see if it works. Guys, there's, it. there's no prescription necessary with Nutrafol. There's no side effects. This is the most amazing thing. It went on their website. They said they have no side effects. Some hair growth drugs have like weird sexual side effects, which is kind of like... The whole point of having hair for a lot of men is like they feel like they'll be more attractive to their to their mate or their 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 uh, their partners. Um, it's recommended by over 850 physicians. So I went to the website, and when it you know there's like I think it's a tab or button that says like recommendations. You click on it, and sure enough, it pulls up like a Google Maps or something, and it just shows all the physicians in your area that recommend this product. I'm like, well, that's pretty legit. It's right off the right out the gates. And then there's a science tab. I don't know. I, this is the one thing I would say they, they need to promote even more heavily because the science tab is the most fascinating. They actually link to the journals that do the clinical studies. Uh, here, the journal's name is the Journal of Drugs in Dermatology. So they actually have like all this like clinical research and stuff. So I'm really excited to try this. Thank you to Nutrafol for sponsoring this episode. Again, that's N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com. And use the promo code MADCAST for $10 off your subscription. So give it a shot. So thank you again, guys. But we should move on to the results of last week's debate, guys. Last week, Vin, I want to hear what you think of this. We debated, should beauty pageants have swimsuit contests? What do you think? Uh, Yes. You think they should? 100%. Well, we asked the audience, should beauty pageants have swimsuit contests? And with 83% of the vote, yes, correct. (laughs) Vin, a sensible man. And then I also asked the question, because I made the case that objectification is good or can be good, especially sexual objectification. And the only time that sexual objectification is bad is if you think that sex is bad. So I asked the audience whether or not they think that objectification is bad... And with 77% of the vote, no! <laughs> yeah, I did a great job. What do you think, Ron? Uh, congratulations. Thank you. First tangent officer. He knows not to slip up because that that first tangent officer is a very, mm-hmm. very fragile, very fragile promotion you got there. Mm, yeah. yeah, big winner. Yeah, yeah. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. Well, we got some voicemail, but before we do that, guys... Before we get to the voicemail, did we get a prezi? We did. Did this we get is a like prezi? The fourth week in the in a row, we got a very special fan gift, a care package, guys, from a big, big fan. Here, I got a, I got a note here. I got some several notes because we got multiple gifts here. It says two real Maddox, something sweet for my favorite bitter curmudgeon from Surreal Maddox. So Surreal uh-huh. Maddox, yeah, from Surreal Maddox. And look at this, it's a mug that says "Up Yours." <laughs> so. <laughs> It's like a coffee mug. We'll hold this up on camera so you guys can see on YouTube. But it's basically a coffee mug where if you pour the coffee in, you don't see the finger. But as you drink, the uh, finger slowly emerges. Ah, Isn't that cool? That is cool. Yeah. Thank you, Surreal Maddox. And then Surreal Maddox also sent some tea. It's Zoho Lemongrass Green Tea. Because I mentioned a while back, I like lemongrass. And so I got some lemongrass green tea. How cool is that? You know, and you have the ten pyramid shaped tea bag sachets, which I like pyramid, those. Sa- yeah. I like those sachets when they come in little pyramid shape. Yeah, it's kind of it's fun. It's nice. And then I got some original honey stash, original honey sticks. Oh, there I sense a theme going on. Yeah, for your tea, that's so cool. Thank you so much, Surreal Maddox. Awesome, awesome gifts, and everything. Everything is like in the same theme, right? We get the the mug, the tea, you know, I, and the fuck you mug, like the tea, the honey. And the fuck you mug. The tea, the honey, and the fuck you mug. Thank you so much. That's very cool. The Maybe. old school Maddox fans are going to write in to complain. They, they wanted Tabasco, beef, and heart attacks. That's what, what we what had That's what we had last week, <gasps> All right. We literally got a bunch of uh, hot sauce and uh, beef jerky. Right. So, Good. yeah, we do have that, and it's fantastic. Uh, I will say this. A while ago on Twitter, I posted something about, like, how, you know, real men drink their tea black, and someone... <laughs> 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 so, 
<laughs> and someone was like making fun of me. It's like, Maddox, you've gone soft. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I'm, I'm, I'm talking to a friend of mine. I'm like, this guy on Twitter called me out for going soft because I drink my tea black. What's unmanly about drinking black tea? And he goes, tea. <laughs> I said fuck. <laughs> I didn't even realize it. <laughs> well, thank you, Surreal Maddox. Very cool, very cool gift, guys. If you guys want to send a gift, uh, send me a message on Facebook. I can hook you up with that number. Excuse me, the uh, the address. But we should get to the voicemail, and then we've got some news headlines with Taylor, our junior journalist. But here is the first voicemail. This one's about uh, beauty pageants. Uh, last week, Vin, we had the guest on Lauren Francesca. And, uh, you know, we, we made a joke that uh, she's a, a model and an actress, or uh, as Ron said, a mactress. And then... <laughs> term they prefer. Yeah. Well, uh, and then she goes, or mattress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, here's a, here's a voicemail about that. Listen to this. So the mattress doesn't think beauty pageants should have bikini competitions because the women are being objectified, yet she admits they're posting bikini photos because they get the most likes. Isn't that basically what a beauty pageant is? <laughs> the women all wear bikinis, and the one who gets the most likes is the winner? <laughs> fuck whales. And yeah, fuck, fuck whales to you, too. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> fuck whales to you, too. A lot of people uh, called in because they checked uh, Lauren's Instagram page, and she posted a lot of pictures of herself in uh, bikinis and bathing suits. It's about economics. Uh, what gets the likes? That's what. It's not it's, about morality. That's essentially what she said. Taylor. Saying. But I think I think it's a I, I think <laughs> it's a good thing. I made the case that it's a good thing. Sexual objectification is a good thing. It's good to be useful. It's good to be to fill a need. Don't you think? I I I would actually controversially make the point. I I, I don't think it is a good thing. It, it, like then. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, all right. We won't go over what what happened last week, but uh, yeah, I, I I don't think it's a good thing, especially if you're a woman. It's there's, there's too much value, but it, it's biological in our genes that we are attracted to women. That that's what in terms of the economics of the situation, that that simply is. Um, straight men are attracted. Oh to women, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So, but I I mean, if that is that necessarily a bad like what's what's wrong with uh with marketing yourself like that. Or what's wrong? What's wrong with? There's nothing wrong, wrong with marketing. I I would absolutely play up to it. Um, with looks, it's just uh, it it can be difficult for a woman uh who is not objectified. I, and, I, and I think I, I'm getting into mansplaining territories, but uh, yeah, I, I I've seen a lot of things I didn't like around that area. Well, if it's something that is against their will, right? If they say are in working in a professional environment and they want to come across as a professional. And they're trying to do their jobs, and then they're being objectified. That's definitely a problem, right? That that's because you're not that taking is. them seriously. You're being dismissive of them. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Th- I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about uh, sexual objectification from people who want to be used in that way, who want to offer. Ser- I won't even say used. I, they want to offer their services in that way. Like for example, people who work in the uh, adult performance industry. I have many friends who work in the adult performance industry, and that's what they do. They can you introduce me? <laughs> <laughs> Uh-huh. I can, and they are the bet like the best people. Like, no, they're, best they're not the girls. It's, it's all the dudes with rags afterwards who clean up. That's who he knows. <laughs> <laughs> they're all named like Doug. <laughs> A lot of Doug. The fluffers, right? Okay. Yeah. No, but uh, if that's what you do, and it's your choice, then yeah, then I, it, it's, it's, it's very wrong. empowering. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, so this is just a comment that happened. Uh, it took me a few hours, but look at this evidence. Vin, long hair, marketing is cool. Maddox, bald, marketing is shit. I could totally see Vin being a hair growth marketer. <laughs> Vin, have you been using Nutrafol? Now we know yeah, what's working now on. we know what's going on. Uh, here's another voicemail about the live shows that we'd be doing. Here's a notification. Listen to this. Hey, Lord Maddox, it's me. I'm pretty upset I missed the live stream since I have no idea how since I had a pretty boring weekend last weekend, and I was home, and I didn't get any notifications. So that's lame. I don't know if your notifications are going out to everyone. Um, yeah, fuck YouTube in this case. It's their fucking problem. Yeah, so you won't get a notification for these live shows. I'm posting them directly on social media to Facebook and Twitter and the Maddox University Facebook group that I created. Uh, if you are a genius or a hot babe who's also a genius... 
you're qualified to join this group. But I'll, I'll be posting these uh, live shows. Again, this has uh, been kind of an experiment. We'll see if you guys like these. We'll continue doing them. But here's another... The easy way to yeah. do it would be uh, just make sure you're tweeting it every Saturday and have them turn notifications on your Twitter. And hey, there way, you go. Yeah. How, how do you turn notifications on someone's Twitter? Um, the, Next to the follow button, there's a, a button you click that way. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. That's very cool. Thank you, Taylor. It's very helpful. What a wonderful bit of marketing advice. Yeah, that hmm. is, actually. Uh, we got a we got a voicemail from the Bad Ombre, Ron, and it's about you. Oh, man. <laughs> Listen to this. Hey, man. What's up, cabrones? <laughs> Anyways, I was going to say, Ron Babcock, Bab, sounds like baboso, which means like drooling, son of a bitch, and cock means penis, so you literally mean a drooling penis. <laughs> I don't know. That's just how Spanish words work. <laughs> I won't tell you what I'm drunk. I promise that shit. I, I'm just fucking drunk and high right now. I don't even fuck what the fuck I am. <laughs> <laughs> so is that who we're advising to, Maddox? Uh, yes, that's uh, that's the. Yeah, uh, I just like break. learning something new about my name. Yeah. Actually, I, I I did a little bit of research. Uh, my last name come from when people had jobs. When you were named after what you did, I guess a long time ago, there's a guy named Bab the Cook. Yeah. Oh. And over the years, it got shortened to Babcock, and then over the years, it got shortened to Pussy. So <laughs> it's just interesting to see it. Uh, mostly just for my middle school career, and then it went back to Babcock. Is that? Uh, is there any truth to that? Is was it? That's really- what I was reading. Like, like yeah. that's where a lot of people's names, I guess, came from. You were just named as like, you know, the thing people called you and what yeah. you did. That's how, how you were identified. Yeah, like I know, I still know a lot of Smiths, and that's short for yeah. blacksmith. Yeah, exactly. And, and bakers, literally, not even short, but just a baker. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know what's funny? There's so many more parallels in the United States in the Western culture to the Middle Eastern culture that people don't really realize. It's basically almost the exact same thing, just like, you know, different different set of values. But in the Middle East, they have the word bin means son of. So bin Laden is son of Laden. Osama, the son of his father, Laden. Oh, yeah. interesting. And so it's kind of a similar thing. So they, they rather than naming you after your occupation, they named you after, and sometimes it was a school, too. Um, there was like, you know, if you went to a certain school, it would be like, you know, uh, Taylor bin whatever university that they went to or something like that. So that's, you know, that's, that's where their names came from as well. Uh, but anyway, cool. <laughs> but speaking of Taylor, Taylor, here's a, a little bit of a motivational voicemail. Listen to this. Hey Maddox. Uh, listen, man, I've been reading you and into you since I was like a middle schooler, uh, but not consecutively. I just found out you have a podcast anyway. Uh, like your debate last week, I gotta say, Taylor, Taylor's gotta believe in himself a little more. Taylor, man, you were almost on the verge of saying something cool, which is that <laughs> we shouldn't have child actors, and then you canceled that. Dude, I mean, like, you do not want kids to get anywhere near the entertainment industry. Like, what are you thinking, man? Probably one of the most famous child stars ever would be Judy Garland, and she od Um... Yeah, believe in yourself, Taylor. That's my big message. Fuck whales. I've yeah. said that to you quite a few times before. Actually. I think I've said yeah. that too. If I haven't, I've, I've definitely thought it. Like, Taylor... That's actually how we say goodbye on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, bye, Ron. <laughs> believe in yourself. <laughs> believe in yourself, Taylor. <laughs> Taylor, Taylor, uh, he, he's such an interesting dude, and I could like, you know, this this uh, this sounds a little out of character, but like, absolutely, one of the one of the nicest guys, one of the smartest guys, hardworking, cares, uh, empathetic, love Taylor, he's a great dude. Yeah, yeah, very kind. Well, thank you very much, guys, and thank you for calling and thinking about me. Uh, yeah. Well, here's a voicemail that uh, suggested a possible promotion for Taylor. Listen Whoa, to this. Maddox, I'd like to propose a promotion for Taylor. I would like to propose that he be mod- um, promoted to journalist in moderation <laughs> because he does do some moderating on the show, but he also does a little bit of journalism, but not that much journalism. <laughs> journalist in moderation. Do you get it? <laughs> I don't yeah. get it. I don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> well, Taylor doesn't get it. <laughs> Leave voicemails next week explaining that joke. Maddox, none of your fans sound very well. Yeah. 
<laughs> Wait, what do you mean? Like the bad hombre who's drunk? And, by the way, he called in so many. We got so many voice bills from him this week, more than we've ever gotten. Mostly drunk. One of them was uh, was him just trailing off and saying, uh, fuck it. <laughs> yeah. I, I got another one. I'll play the tail end after the, the credits, which I always do, guys. If you guys don't listen to the full show, listen after the music because we have a few voicemails after that. But Taylor last week brought in a news story about uh, some scientists who invented a pizza that uh, cures cancer, potentially. Um, and uh, here's a voicemail about that. Listen to this. All right, what the fuck are you doing if you're a scientist and you spend time making pizza? Honestly, though, Jesus Christ, do something better with your life. (laughs) This guy calling in to criticize scientists for making anti-cancer pizza into a podcast where he's, like, hoping that his voicemail will get played criticizing them for not doing something better with their lives. <laughs> well, if that scientist is listening in, uh, maybe you could drop a message and we could debate it next week. Hey, you know what? If you're that scientist who developed this pizza, this anti-cancer pizza, please call in next week. And you know what, Vin? We've had a very high success rate. Anytime I've, I've asked for a celebrity to call in, uh, you know, uh, Donald Trump, Bono has called into this show before. We all, Every time I mention that, the following week, we get a celebrity call in. So... If you're a celebrity, you want to call into the show, we'll play that voicemail next week, or if you're that pizza scientist. Uh, but here's a here's the voicemail. So longtime listeners of the show know I'm a huge fan of Sonic the Hedgehog. I think Sonic's yeah, fantastic. Yeah, well, here's a caller calling in to say that I'm justified in thinking Sonic's cool and fast, because listen to how cool this is. Hey, Maddox. I just have some really cool information I just figured you would want to know, since you think Sonic is the greatest thing ever. So my boyfriend's a chemist, and he works with this protein called hedgehog protein, and one of the variants of it, I guess, whatever it is, is actually named after Sonic the Hedgehog, and I don't think any other video game character has a chemical named after him, or it's a protein, so no other superhero or video game character has a protein named after him, so you can settle the debate now. Sonic is the best, because he's the only one who has anything scientifically named after him. Um, That's it. Yeah, everybody's doing great. Keep up the great work. Fuck whales. Yeah, fuck whales to you too. How cool is that shit, huh? Sonic's got a protein named after him. You don't have a Mario protein. Fallout Boy has a band named after him. Fallout Boy? They, uh, oh, that's true. Yeah, uh, yeah, Simpsons, yeah. From the Simpsons, yeah. A Mario protein would be gross, I think. You don't want any Mario protein. Uh, Like Italian pizza, pasta. Yeah, you don't want any protein from Mario. There is a Mario pasta, but it's uh, illegal. <laughs> it's an unauthorized uh, Mario image, oh, as far oh, as I know. Yeah, it's a bootleg Mario pasta. Yeah. That's funny. Uh, well, here is one last voicemail because a couple of weeks ago, Vin, we talked about we had the debate: Are the Beatles overrated? Great, I I I agree. Uh, yeah, I, you I, think I, they are? Yeah. Okay, great. I want to hear your insight on this. And this guy called in about that too. Listen to this. Oh, finally, it's Sunday, and I'm done working, and I finally get a chance to listen to this week's podcast. And you guys are actually touching on something that I think is really important, and that is that rabid fans of certain bands fucking suck. Case in point, I've called in a couple times before, and I'm actually a professional musician. That's what I do for a living. If I say anything bad about the Beatles, because I think they're overrated, or the Grateful Dead, because I think they're fucking hacks, (laughs) people will go fucking rabid, especially the Grateful Dead fans. The moment that you say, uh, I don't really think they were that good of a band, those fucking guys will fucking come at you with cat claws, man. <laughs> Anyways, great episode, way better than the other shit you were putting them out, and uh, yeah, good job. <laughs> ah, yeah. I think it's uh, both a compliment and uh, yeah, friendly. <laughs> hey Maddox, good episode, way better than that other garbage you've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> nice work, shithead. Yeah, my fans. It's like telling uh, uh, your girlfriend, "Hey, thanks for looking nice for once." <laughs> <laughs> Good. It's a, it's still a compliment. Yeah, it's like the, a, aggressive compliment. It's a very aggressive, aggressive compliments are kind of my favorite. Yeah, you're yeah. the only podcast host that has your fans nagging you. <laughs> yeah, it's constantly, constantly. Um, so, what do you think, Vin? Uh, Beatles overrated? Yeah, I, I, I like. Uh, T- taste is, you know, taste is an evaluation of thing. It's so ridiculous when people get offended by your taste. Taste just vary from person to person. Yes. No? 
I'm, uh, I'm with Finn on this one. I get it. I get pissed off when I go to a restaurant with a picky eater. I it it upsets me irrationally. I know it's irrational, but I, I get so mad. I'm like, why the fuck aren't you eating this this thing? You think you were better than the chef? You think you know more than a guy who who went to culinary school? You think you have any fuck? And then the other thing that pisses me off is when someone orders a, a meal, they put it down on the table. First thing they do is they go for the salt. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna put, put salt on my fucking food. Did you taste it? Did you fucking taste it, shithead? Uh, How do you know it needs salt, uh, idiot? I do both of those things. You do- <laughs> <laughs> Are you really a picky eater? Yeah. Oh shit. How picky are we talking? Because I got a friend who's super picky. He eats like five things. Yeah, like cereal, yeah, chicken I, fingers. I, well, mm-hmm. that's it. I, I do like going out and eating pizza and stuff, but uh, I eat the same foods every day, seven days a week. What? I have a perfectly balanced, as far as I know, I, I, I'm just doing an allergy test to find out what foods are like the Uh-oh. best for my gut. Okay, so if it's an if it's like a health thing, that's different. Yeah, it's about optimizing my health. Oh, okay. That's then it's not you. <laughs> we're back <laughs> back to hating. Wait, <laughs> what are the, what are the, <laughs> you're doing this? You're doing this to be healthy. Yeah, but not out of necessity. Um, I I I I, I could eat mashed potato and stuff, but I just don't. Okay. Oh, that's that's uh, yeah. That's more on the now. You're back on the health kick. Uh, what are the foods you eat every day? Uh, for breakfast I have eggs, avocado, peas, carrots, broccoli. You got so British near the end. <laughs> yeah. Peas, carrots, a mug of gravy. <laughs> Cheese curds. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think this is good content for your audience. I think this oh, is great, great. content. I love this. this yeah. Is, yeah. Please go on. Wait, you... I love hearing what people eat throughout their day. I actually find I, right, it kind of fascinating. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So yeah. for lunch, I have organic brown rice, shrimp, uh, mushrooms, and a further egg. And a What? what? Well, I, I have eggs for breakfast, and I have a fervor egg for lunch. What's right? No, we understand the egg what, part. What's, ex- the, <laughs> what's the, uh, a fervor? <laughs> Most people only eat eggs once a day, what's so I like go a- further and have one more. Oh, a oh, further egg! Oh my, oh god. my god! Dude, I wow! Was like, what's a fervor egg? egg? Oh Is that like god. a Fabergé egg? Like, what are you eating, yeah. man? <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna come out one day that he's not even British or something. This is just an act. It. He's just marketing. This is like all yeah, marketing. Yeah, this is all part of a branding yeah. concept. Because British accents are like so authoritative and sexy. People are like, oh yeah, yeah I'm listening to everything you yeah, say. Yeah, fer- fervor eggs. Yeah, fervor eggs. <laughs> they were okay. good. Uh, so brown rice and shrimp. That's pretty specific. Yeah, and that's then, very healthy. Yeah, what's uh, what do you got next? Uh, brown rice, uh, organic, non-antibiotic chicken, uh, half to one tomato. Um, well, you don't want to go full tomato. Well, I have been, but I, I find I've been eating a little bit too much. My uh, discipline... Too much tomato? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, my discipline and accountability coach says I should eat five meals a day. So he's trying to work to get me reduced to percentages. So I've gone down from three eggs and three avocados for breakfast for two for each. Oh, two, two full avocados. Yeah, well, I, today I had three. Ugh, wow. Man, letting yourself go. Holy shit. This is factually fascinating because because everything nutritionally is there. It sounds like you're getting yeah. all the fats. Yeah, good fats in the yeah, avocado. Good protein. Yeah, so no soy, no gluten, no real dairy. Like eggs don't really count. Um, no red meat. So, so there's like lots of no's in there. It's it's pretty balanced. Oh, that's fascinating. What I eat. And what do you eat? Uh, and let's keep let's keep this going because I'm actually zero, genuinely curious. Zero snacking outside of those three meals, uh, but I've started to have a Nutri Bullet to mix together all the boring stuff that I wouldn't normally eat, like the shrimp and the brown rice. <laughs> no, like <laughs> celery. Who the okay. hell wants to eat spinach? Yeah, boring. Yeah, but you can put that in with a bit of fruit, and then. But you know what? I can't have pineapple juice. Pineapple gives me a canker. Isn't that a weird word? Uh, canker. Yeah. But you know, the, the enzymes in pineapple literally eat your flesh. Yeah. It's weird that they sell that in the shops. So I, re- I realized this as a kid one day because I was eating a shit ton of pineapple. And like my parents, you know, there's a fucking pineapple. So I'm carving this thing up and just eating the g- giant fucking slice of pineapple fresh. And after like an hour of gorging on this pineapple... <laughs> eating a full pineapple by myself my mouth started to like burn i could feel it like you know burning inside i'm like wow that's that's not good i i definitely have a limit on how much pineapple i can eat it's not a whole one apparently but uh that's that's curious so you so you can have a little bit of pineapple juice you said yeah i i had two cups of pineapple juice backstage at green day that's about the limit i can have 
Man, you were partying so hard. Oh, what about Greendale? Let's hear this story. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> Taylor sounds really curious. Yeah, I, w- I was backstage. Well, he brought up he brought up Green Day for a reason. Oh, Why yeah, let's he, hear it. Like I, you, I love you Green Day. slipped They're that in band. there. Yeah, you no. could have said I had two cups. You said, but instead you said two cups backstage with Green Day. Yeah, they they weren't in attendance. Um, Billy Joe cannot party. One of his road guys was telling me because he used to be an alcoholic, so now he has to behave. I guess I should say allegedly again. A, a, a lot of bands, a lot of bands are kind of like that. I went to the backstage of what's that band, Velvet, Velvet Revolver. Oh, right? nice. Yeah, yeah, I went backstage and the lead singer like came out on stage and he was like so rock and roll on stage. Yeah, yeah. He's like holding a microphone into a megaphone and it's just pure feedback. And, yeah. <laughs> and Slash was on stage and he was drooling into the audience and everyone was like so fucking rock and roll and like hip and cool. I go backstage and. The lead singer, I forget his, I don't know his name, but he's... Scott Whelan. Is that, is that who it is? He passed away. Oh, did he? Yeah, from, oh. like, drug overdose. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Well, that, that's rough. Well, uh, backstage, I Give saw yourself him. the negative buzzer. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, backstage, he was uh, walking around uh, drinking in O'Doul's and eating Triscuits. I'm like, huh. <laughs> no. Hey, we got an interesting comment you can read out there, the bottom comment, Maddox. Some yeah. Interesting... Uh, we got a we got a comment in the chat room from Moros. He says, "That's what I hate about Brits. They eat the shit out of Brussels sprouts, but hate spinach. Dumb, tasteless fucks." <laughs> Very constructive audience. <laughs> <laughs> spinach, I've made the argument for years that spinach is a very neutral tasting uh, leafy vegetable. Yeah, it's just boring though. Yeah. I like spin- when well, I would do the road and I would have no, just be eating fast food, my body was craving like vegetables yeah. that I just went into a supermarket. I bought a bag of spinach. I poured water into it and cut off the bottom to rinse it. And then I just ate wet spinach for a hundred miles and ate the whole bag and I fucking loved it. Because I was so tired of eating like Chick Fil A and McDonald's and Subway and Jimmy John's for every fucking meal. Yeah, I hear that. Well, so spinach. Something I wanted to experiment with for a while is making green cookies. I, I bake. I'm a real good baker. Uh, maybe that should be my last name, Baker Maddox Baker. So I, I experimented with. I wanted to make is a green spinach. I used spinach. Yeah. So How'd I, that I turn ma- out. Turn out great. No one could fucking tell. And that's the thing. If they, I, I told some of my friends that I use spinach. And they're like, oh, gross. I'm not going to eat that. Oh, you don't know how to cook. You're a fucking idiot. And so. None of us talk to you like that. <laughs> these are. Literally, we're all like, oh, this is great. Thanks for making this, man. I this, this I think this was even before I knew you were on. Uh, it must have been like right around the time I met you or, or right before I knew. But I made these spinach cookies and uh, everyone was like, oh, man, totally, totally gross. I can taste the spinach. I'm like, no, you fucking can't because that's why they use spinach to color pastas. Right, some pastas are green. Oh. Yeah, because it's a very neutral. There's no f- real flavor. I love spinach. Someone just commented, maybe that's why Ron resembles Popeye now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. That means I'm fucking buff as shit. Yeah, buff as shit, man. Yeah, spinach. Uh, so I, I, I even went so far as to uh, trick, try to trick my friends one time. Right. So I was buying cookies to make for like a you Super Bowl party. You little mischievous bastard. Uh-huh. So I, I bought a bag of spinach, but I also bought green food coloring. And I said I was making cookies. I was going to make mint chocolate chip cookies, but I wanted the green to be a real, you know, the cookie not to be arbitrarily green, but for a real reason. So I made these cookies with spinach. They were devoured at the Super Bowl party. Not a single fucking idiot said, oh, there's spinach in this. It tastes a little weird. It didn't taste weird, idiots. Guess you try my spinach cookies. They're great. <laughs> um <laughs> We need to work on your marketing for these cookies. <laughs> Should I not end that yeah. <laughs> with a burp? <laughs> <laughs> Taylor, it's time for some quick news headlines. What do you got for us? <laughs> a nine-year-old girl has been placed in rehab for her Fortnite addiction. Hey, <laughs> what's wrong with that? Experts fear she is one of many children at risk of developing mental health problems as a result of overexposure to the fight to the death scenarios. The obsessed primary school pupil, one, secretly got up in the night and played until dawn, neglected to go to the toilet because she could not bear to leave the screen, and even hit her father in the face when he tried to confiscate her Xbox gaming console. Why don't you just go online into Xbox.com and just cancel your gold membership? Yeah. Because you need that to play Fortnite. Right. You don't even have to talk to the kid. Yeah. 
And then boom, yeah, when you get a fucking credit card, right. you can play this game again. There you go. Boom. Fortnite addiction. You're putting the kid in a fucking rehab because of your problem. It's called just cancel your internet access. Just to Xbox. Be a fucking man. Be a father. Experts say they've never seen anything like the addictions they're seeing from Fortnite and how widespread and potentially damaging it is. Experts claim it is the high-profile celebrity endorsements in recent weeks that have fueled exposure. Yeah, that and it's fucking fun as shit and I love it and I play till dawn and I feel... Uh, you know, I feel like ass the next day, but it's it's fucking phenomenal. I'm just, really great. I just feel bad for that guy's carpet. Why? You know? Well, because she wouldn't go to the bathroom. Oh, yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's like, fucking okay. A. Now I got to deal with the kid, and I got to, like, we just got this carpet, and you got to clean it. You guys, look, I talk about, you know, I play Fortnite on streams. I did a Twitch stream just last night, actually, where I did a Fortnite stream, and I chroma key myself into it. So whoa, Fortnite, whoa, what's your Twitch username? We should check you out. Yeah, thank you, Tim. Marketing. <laughs> Marketing, yeah, Real Maddox. Uh, check it out on Twitch. Follow me there. But I'm doing something that I don't think anyone else is doing. I invented this. Uh, in Fortnite, there's a lot of foliage, and it's green, like grass and, and trees and things like that. So I thought, while I was playing it one day, I was like, this, is, this could be a green screen. And I thought, well, I'm going to throw my camera behind the game, my webcam, blow my face up so it's just like a really intense shot of my eyes and my mouth and nose, and I'm going to put that behind the green screen. So in Fortnite, sometimes I'll land in a building, you won't see me, and then as I'm coming up above a hill, it gets grassy and green, and you'll see my eyes pop up, <laughs> and it is so bizarre, and people love watching it. Uh, that's that's a super fun thing. But here's my MLG hack, okay? MLG stands for Major League Gaming. If you guys want some MLG strats, here's an actual MLG strat. When you got to take a shit or you got to take a, take a leak when you're playing Fortnite, join a match, and then as you parachute down, you can go to the bathroom. You don't need to fucking play the entire time. I leave. Uh, one time I took a shit, right? Yeah, keep talking. Yeah. Good content. Yep. Yeah. So I, I jumped out of the plane. I, I finished, and then I checked the game, and I was 16th place. What a winner. Electric scooter startup Bird is the fastest company to reach a valuation of $1 billion. Holy shit, what is this? Bird. Bird. The electric scooters you see. I everywhere. saw them on the way yeah. here. I've been yeah. seeing them like all over town. They just, like, do people just leave them around? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's the future of transportation. That's so bizarre. So it's known as last mile transportation. You get out the Uber and then. You, you take it for Pick the last a, bit. But the problem is people are leaving them everywhere. That's not a problem. That's why we can't have them. No, no, no. That's fine. It's Cars like, are 4,000 l- pounds of metal when they're blocking up the roads. Yeah, but that's like you don't problem. leave the scooter in the middle of the fucking sidewalk. You just put it off to the side. That's if it. If it's not illegal, it's okay to do. <laughs> Jesus Bird, Christ. What? I can't wait for you to break your ankle on one of those things. Bird, one of many scooter startups currently sweeping the United States, was last valued at $400 million after closing a $100 million in Series B funding in early March. The previous record from founding to $1 billion was 1.79 years, set by 3D printing company Desktop Metal, according to a ranking compiled. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, yeah, no, so like the Bird scooters are, are mainly in West Los Angeles right now. And like if you go, see them you, everywhere. Go, you go to like Santa Monica, Venice, you're, you'll see them a lot. They're not so much in the valley or like even Hollywood. Hollywood areas. The problem is in Santa Monica, they're having people who are like picking up the scooters and throwing them in the ocean. Oh, really? What, really? <laughs> yeah. Is that a thing? So they just people. Well, like, you know, fuck this shit. <laughs> I get the feeling a lot of Maddox's fans live in wooden huts around the world. So do you think these uh, scooters will eventually become mainstream in outside I, outside of big it cities? It seems like there's a, a legitimate possibility that it's going to grow just as fast as Uber did. Um, I hope so. Um, I, I I think that it like you know everyone wants to think of it very critically like. This is littering. Littering. It makes everything look bad. But like, if it can actually solve a, a critical problem in society, which will make people transport by car less, maybe it's a really good. I think thing. it's a, a it's a it's a wonderfully cheap way of, of addressing the whole last mile problem, which is like you know, just getting from the transportation hub if you take metro to wherever you need to be. My whole thing is just don't leave him in the middle of the fucking sidewalk. What's really cool is that like uh, there's a, a a lot of people who make money now by going and getting the birds at night so like there's an entire industry like surrounding collecting these things and people are calling it like the pokemon go where you actually get paid money because like the birds are are constantly like under bridges or like in weeds and stuff we're in the middle of the fucking ocean yeah 
So wait a second. Are these electric scooters? Is that how they work? Yeah, they're cheaply made in China. So they're, and, they're, and how are they? How are they? How does it work? So you put so, your app on a phone, you activate it, and then it costs one dollar per ride. Really? Yeah. That's you go as fantastic. far as you want. Yeah. Really, one dollar per ride? And so you, you could take it all the way to New York if you wanted to. It would run out of electricity. So how does it? How does it charge? Is it solar powered? Like how? Does I it, think. I think they have like charge stations yeah. that like people will no. go around at night. And go. Yeah, so uh, at night, uh, people will collect them. Uh, and apparently, it's a big thing for like high schoolers to do for extra money. Is that they go and then they grab a ton of them and then they charge them all overnight and then they bring them back to hub spots. I wonder how long they last for. Like the scooter, like how many rides it it can do before it kind of gives out after the wear and tear that the general public puts on it. That's fascinating, actually. I'm, I'm actually genuinely curious. The one thing is I would use this as, as transportation to and from places, but if I leave it outside somewhere, then someone else could come. I mean, can you, you could theoretically take it inside your house or your, your I work. I if there's like a right? GPS yeah. thing on it, though. There, of course there is, yeah. Yeah, they've so got they, it. But it's interesting, the idea of like we're kind of moving. Somebody just commented on this, too. It's like the idea of like just a shared library of – these things where we don't have to have individual ownership and the also like the maintenance of it all. Like it's just kind of a shared thing that you quote subscribe to. Well, they tried to do this in Portland a while back. They had a citywide initiative where they had these yellow bikes and it was basically just grab and go and leave it wherever you, you, you know, you, you end up and then people were just stealing the bikes, repainting them, that sort of thing. But I guess this is different because the scooter will not work without the the app authorizing. I, I, I think like with something, whenever something's for free, I think you need to charge a nominal fee to make people like value it. Yeah. Or a dollar care. fee. I, I was in San Diego last week and my Uber driver was complaining that uh, there were these yellow bikes in San Diego as well. Uh, and someone worked out to kill the locks uh, and they called, they called it mobilizing the homeless and they said it caused chaos. When I'm not passing judgment. This is what they said. And they they made the locks no longer work on these scooters? They just cut them off, and then the homeless were in one part of San Diego, yeah. and then they were everywhere. Holy shit. Because of the bikes. Oh, because of the bikes. Did yeah, because the, bikes, the bikes... Yeah, and then wow. like a, a news team, I think, did a analysis of some of the seats, and they found a lot of uh, syphilis and gonorrhea on the seats. Gross! That's why you do fucking scooters. <laughs> Yeah, oh man. More men are turning to plastic surgery to try to improve their looks. The number of plastic surgery procedures performed on men rose 29% between 2000 and 2017, the American Society of Plastic Surgeons reported. Some 1.3 million cosmetic procedures were performed on men last year alone. Okay, I'm going to call shenanigans on this story. Did you hear that? The tail end of that second to last sentence. Read that again, Taylor. Uh, the American Society of what approved? What? American Society of Plastic Surgeons. Okay. So anytime you hear a news story yep. about an industry <laughs> and they quote that industry, you know, they're, they're the saying- The industry lobbying group? Yeah, exactly. Or they do this all the time. That's a puff piece. That's a PR piece that you just read. And that's the type of marketing I have a problem with because oh, it's dishonest. Shit, it's Whoa. Full circle. Yeah. Yeah, that's dishonest marketing. It's very, it's disingenuous. If you are paid, if you were, if that's a paid marketing piece, it should be disclosed that that's a paid marketing piece, don't you think? The the FTC try and disclose that, and I'm sure Taylor could go into great detail with the influencers who, for years, got away with not disclosing their paid uh, advertisements. Though though it was illegal on TV and radio, yeah. they hadn't quite caught up with social media yet. They have now, and you, you could get your account expelled for it. Good. I think that's on the good side, thing. I run a marketing company. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's something I th- I think should be disclosed because you should know. Yeah, yeah, if- and it, it is it is the law to disclose yeah. it. I have a buddy from Iran who told me like uh, apparently there's different areas of the world where you go if you want to have work done. So he was trying to tell me that he's like in Iran. He's like, it's the best for hair plugs. He actually flew back to Iran to get his hair plugs because he went, people who give hair transplants in this country don't know what they're doing. Really? And he's like, everyone in Iran, man. He's like, that's where you go. If you need hair plugs, I'm like, I don't want hair plugs. He's like, but if you do, <laughs> and if you want to get like gender reassignment surgery, Thailand. Thailand. That's I, I was the place to say that. Yeah. So there's different places for all. And I think South Korea is one of them. You know, South like, Korea is like for nose. Uh, yeah, and it's just wow. Yeah, like you have yeah. the different industries that are probably big because there's so many people in that country who yeah. want that surgery. So you have a lot like where they really know what they're fucking doing. Yeah, Thailand is huge for... But, but it's weird. Like we don't need to do anything because we're already pretty fucking like, how do you improve on perfect, right? Bingo. Jonah Falcon is believed to have the largest natural penis in the world. 
Wait, who's this guy? Jonah Falcon, the native New Yorker who is openly bisexual, said he has bedded many famous people, including porn stars and actors, and even Oscar winners. He measures between 8 and 9 inches in length when flaccid, compared to the average man who is 5 to 6 inches when erect. He said, when I'm fully hard, I'm 13 and a half inches with a 7 and a half to 8 inch diameter. The worst thing about being a bit extra is airport security, having to be stopped and frisked. They always think it's fake, and I can't just whip it out and show them, he says. That's a PR puff piece. I'm going to tell (laughs) you. Marketing. Yeah, the guy's like, "Hey, check out my cock," and he ha- he paid a, a publicist to put that fucking article out there. Holy shit! Seven man. and a half to eight inch diameter. That's, That's like, like two Coke cans. Yeah, seven and a half. I mean, I mean, not to get too vulgar or gross about it, but like, no. how is he physically able to have intercourse? I. Yeah. So there was an episode of Sex in the City a long time ago where they. <laughs> Jesus, who who are you? <laughs> I know. I've said in the past, I like Sex in the City. Sorry, guys. I Adam Carolla does, too. Show. Adam does he really? is a, a, a passionate fan of there you Sex go. in the City. Smart men like Sex in the City. Me and Adam Carolla. I was on Adam Carolla's show, full disclosure, uh, not too long ago. <laughs> Adam's, Adam's a, we have a yes. lot in common. We have a lot of our philosophies. I share the same birthday as him. Holy shit. Yeah. Well, that's I'm, I'm actually a big fan of him. Yeah, Adam Cole Curl's great. But um yeah, they uh, a lot of women I've talked to uh because, you know, after after we've uh, we've had intercourse say, "Wow, that was too big." 80, I I'll never go I'll never go 12 again. I'm done with that. <laughs> I was waiting to use that. What does God look like? Liberals and conservatives have different ideas, study finds. After asking 551 Americans... Wait, wait, wait. Before you continue, <laughs> let's take a guess. I want to guess, like, liberals think God's like a black man who's, like, <laughs> like a bit... Like, well, conservatives definitely must think old white guy, white beard, long white hair. Confederate flag. <laughs> <laughs> A, b- a bandana that says "Go America or go home." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> After asking 551 American Christians what they think God looks like, a composite mugshot was created <laughs> from the many responses. Oh, God. The end result is a mugshot that shows God is white, young, and clean cut, not unlike someone from an '80s boy band. <laughs> as for his expression, Mona Lisa's vague smile comes to mind. Liberals imagine God as more feminine, younger, and more loving, while conservatives have a white guy in mind who is more powerful, said researchers. The study also found demographics often came into play with our image of God. Caucasians tended to see a white God, African Americans imagined a black God, younger people saw a younger God, and attractive people imagined a more attractive God. A process called reverse correlation was used to create the final image, said the report. The 551 test subjects were shown hundreds of randomly varying pairs of faces and asked which of the two looked more like the face of God. So I guess it was like, you know, when you get glasses, they're like one or two. Yeah, yeah. One or two. And they were like, that's God. You you remember that old website, Hot or Not? They should have one like God or Not. Like... (laughs) 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 <laughs> they show you like various faces and eventually in society we'll find him you know we'll find the one H- him or her sorry oh I know it's 2018 uh, gender uh. anyway <laughs> sorry good story <laughs> do, do you want one more yeah let's do, let's do it plants may appear still and lifeless but they're far craftier than you might believe a new study found that many plants use the same camouflage strategies as animals to avoid damage and protect themselves yeah I wrote about this a little bit in my book about how plants, for plants, some plants can even count. Some plants can detect pain, and they've done this. Uh, they they took it like a tomato plant, and they administered local anesthesia on one stem of the plant, and then injured another stem of the plant to see if, uh, or, or they injured like that that portion of it, whatever, t- uh, to see if it it would notify the rest of the plant, the rest of the body. Well, when they had the local anesthetics to that stem, the rest of the plant didn't react, but it did on the uh, stems that didn't have the anesthesia. That means that it was communicating some kind of injury to the rest of the the plant. So it's kind of an unsound hypothesis or whatever from vegans, vegetarians, that you're not causing pain and suffering by eating plants. That's what they say. And that's their thin, flimsy justification for taking life to sustain themselves. You're still taking life. So every time, like, I mow my lawn, 
it's just like a holocaust. Yes. Did you know that the the fresh grass smell you're you're smelling is actually a self defense mechanism by grass? No. Yeah. So it's it's actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> what? I was answering the question. He's being very honest. <laughs> All right, that's the news. Uh, news. Good news. Thank you, Taylor Good Nikolai, news. our it's journalist in moderation. Journalist in moderation. I kind of like that. <laughs> that's kind of. I mean, also, I like after the full explanation, he went, "Do you get it?" <laughs> 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 well, we'll put it to the vote next week, guys. Madcastmedia.com is where you go to vote and also where you go to find the voicemail number. It's on the bottom of every page of the best debate. Call in, leave us a voicemail. And our brilliant developer, Lord Matthew, has been working on an international call-in line. We may, we're may we working with uh, possibly an Australian number, a number from the UK, and maybe Germany or something. But uh, we'll be having that soon. We're just figuring out the uh, the ins and outs, and we've got a lot of new changes coming to the website as well. But Vin, Vin Clancy, thank you so much for joining us. Great. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, if anyone wants to start or grow a business, go to acetogame.com and get my new book. Ace- Hashtag marketing. There it is, Ace the Game. <laughs> and, and what's the book called? Is it called Ace the Game as well? Yeah. Ace the game, and it's fantastic. Now, Vin, you know, not to blow too much, uh, too much sunshine up your ass, but you really are a brilliant marketer and entrepreneur. I think you guys can learn a lot from this book if you're interested in this world at all. Vin's the real deal. I mean, you you're literally you bootstrapped yourself from social welfare in the UK mm-hmm. to running a media empire. That yeah, is fantastic. multiple six figure businesses inside that. Amazing. Very very cool. Very cool. Very proud of you. Well, check out uh, check out Vin's book, AceTheGame.com. Thank you again, Vin Clancy, for joining us. Thank you to Ron Babcock, first tangent officer. Yeah, man, this is always fun. Thanks, Maddox. Thank you to the junior journalist, Taylor Nikolai. You're very welcome. But most of all, you're welcome. Hey, Taylor, you should stick to doing the news. Do you want to know why people don't like Nickelback or the Big Bang Theory? Because Nickelback and the Big Bang Theory fucking suck. <laughs> <laughs> He's got you there, though. Okay, so like, like the thing that I constantly tell people, or, or or try to have conversations about this, it's like very often the people who say Big Bang Theory sucks have never watched an episode. They're they're, they're going on Reddit or these other social yeah. media platforms, and they're being told that it sucks by other people, but they've never actually watched it. I would like to know if that caller, and feel free to call in again. I would like to know how many episodes of the Big Bang Theory you watched before you decided that it sucked. Like That's it. my only point. Okay. So so that'd be interesting. No, I, I I think you're right, Taylor. A lot of people probably do uh, uh, criticize it without having watched it. I heard that it sucks, and then I watch it, and it did suck. Um. So <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not even saying that I necessarily like the show. Yo, my irritation is with people who pass judgment and then try to get other people to get on board with them whatever like do like without ever actually like consuming the product or service or whatever yeah all right yeah yeah I agree. fair enough well here's one last voicemail again uh from the bad ombre listen to this look man the reason why you judging people by their looks is okay is because i don't know <laughs> great calls this week guys keep them coming hey there don't forget to subscribe to madcast shows on itunes stitcher or your favorite podcast app okay bye madcast media network